Okay, so yeah, my job is Managing Director uh, at HPS, and um, I'm here to talk about the logistics of your Kickstarter as well as obviously the publisher side of it as well. So, get excited for the most riveting half an hour of your life. Okay? <laughs> now, show of hands, who knows the song, The Big Ship Sails on the Alley Alley? You know that song? Yeah. So, you know, yeah, exactly. Well, I want you to remember that song. Okay, and we'll sing it at the end for those that don't know that song. So when your when your when your when your uh, game ships from China and it's on that big blue boat, you're going to remember that because it's on its way and most of your hard work's already been done. So in terms of Kickstarter, I can sit up here a PowerPoint. I'm not going to do that. You'd be really pleased to know. Um, but they're potentially. I could talk to you about a whole host of things. So, what I'd like to potentially do is to maybe, if there are some people out there with burning questions about the logistics and the publishing, then we can get those on the board and then I can cover those off then as we kind of go through and try to make this as potentially interactive as, we, as I possibly can. So, does anybody, if you want me to talk to you, by the way, for a full 30 minutes, I'm quite happy I'll have to talk. So, does anybody have any particular burning questions that they have about Kickstarter logistics and, and potentially getting your, your game to market? Um, any questions? Any, any burning questions you have? We get them on the board, or would you like me to talk to you? I heard of insurance for shipping games across for the first time, and, insurance. and that was uh, just a just a, a shock and a thought because I've never even thought of budgeting for it. Right. Is that something you could touch on? Insurance. You mean shipping from the? Yes. From from the manufacturer. Thanks for that one. <laughs> <laughs> this is a, a one driven by so I've backed the game called Beast Market and um, the uh, they they had loads of problems where the, the, the people just sending it out have, have been sending it far less than the less quantity than they said they were going to be able to do. What 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 do you have in terms of how much of a contract is it? If they don't, so if they say oh, we're going to ship a thousand a day, and they're only shipping four hundred a day, I want to know what. So, so shipping your games out at X per day. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Sorry, that's a really terribly worded question. No, it's not. It's a more the already good question. Sort of related about postage and customs and things. Like, how do you even find out what the rules are, and then? How, how, how do you how do you manage kind of changing postage costs as well? And changing I think your particular international, yeah. 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 Um, so after I've completed basically my entire Kickstarter and I've built everyone, and I still have thousand games in my ground, how do I get those into distribution? You know, should, should I start early with contacting distributors or? Left over stock, how do you go to market? Yeah. 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 How do you get those to market? Yeah. How do you manage the distribution across various continents coming from the one production? Sorry, sorry. So if you're getting something produced in China but then you want to have it sent to America, to Canada, to Europe, to that multi country so, distribution. So, yeah, uh, multi uh, Kickstarter um, drop. <laughs> Uh, or, or, or drop centers, yeah? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Um, how long have you got from when your Kickstarter ends to actually needing to ship things out? What what would be the normal expectation? How long could you stretch it to? And so on. How long after? What's, what's reasonable and what's okay. possible? Yeah. Um, obviously, with kind of money aside, if you've just sold 1,500 copies on Kickstarter, how many more should you buy in your initial print run? It's brilliant. Uh, so, uh, yeah, extra copies after X on Kickstarter, yeah? Okay, anybody else? Uh, how do you deal with international taxation? Predominantly <laughs> for the US, I think, is quite a message. Would you mean custom duties or paying tax on it? Uh, both, if you could touch on. I know it's about to insurance. Okay. Non-choking, CE, and all those other little mini pitfalls and bylaws that... Uh, CE mark, yeah. 
as fun as insurance, necessity of insurance and sort of levels to be trying to get. In what you should be. Well, for, for, for I mean, you're, you're, you're putting this product out there, you've got to make sure it's covered during shipping, you've got to make sure it's covered sitting in a warehouse somewhere. You know, what, what kind of, you know, are you just trying to insure for the lowest level, i.e. the reproduction cost, or are you trying to insure for sale value? Okay. I'll try and cover the why yeah. I'm trying to insure to put in. Presumably when you're planning a Kickstarter, you have a view whether your real goal is hit the funding target to cover your cost, or whether you're intending to bust through it and you're actually relying on the stretch goals to allow you to do what you're <coughs> trying to do. Do you have a view on producing a game and all the supplements all at once? Is that something you... How, how does that change your kind of thinking, the way you manage the Kickstarter? If you think that you're going to have supplements or expansion. Yeah, pre planning on Kickstarter. Uh, well. Quick negative, but leftover, leftover stock. What are the ways of getting rid of truly leftover stock? Just one of the falls within. Um, kind of spare parts for like, you know, if you've sent it and someone's got components missing or something like that. But I don't know if that falls within your area of stuff. Maybe. Most of these I can cover. Um, for you, um, and maybe there's a lot more you don't know at all. Sorry, one more. Um, can you talk a little bit about um, how the glide distribution is? As in, do you have, do you have a distribution per country or per region? Or just so I'll go to that on your go to market strategy for you in terms of the distribution and how you look at the distribution you go to market. Um, and, and we kind of come to that as well. So, Kickstarter logistics. HMS Kickstarter, the big ship sails on the Yaddy Yaddy. When you've got it on your boat, you think your problems are over. Your problems are just beginning. And somebody asked the question here about pre planning on Kickstarter. If you think about your logistics after you've hit your <coughs> Kickstarter, you're in trouble. And the reason you're in trouble are two things. One, you're potentially going to lose money because you really haven't thought about your logistics properly, okay? And secondly, and more importantly, you've actually missed an opportunity. You've missed a big opportunity, okay? So this is, you know, this is where, you know, working with somebody like Dave Press, it doesn't have to be us, but working with whoever, you know, you're working with, okay, is really important that you can kind of consult. And, I'm, you know, we've got people in this room that, that, have, that have worked with us pre- um, pre-planning on, on their Kickstarter and pre-planning logistics. And we had a very good example where, I don't think we saw a, a, a recent one, was called Venom Assault, which we worked with. Now, Venom Assault, I'll give you a really good idea, he had not looked at his logistics. Halfway through his campaign, he was going to fail. He was not going to hit his target. And he came to us for quotes, okay? And we actually re-quoted him on his logistics for shipping into Europe. He, what was it, 14 hours later, he scrapped his Kickstarter, and with our advice and guidance on shipping, he relaunched it, and he smashed it. And he would double the European backers that he had previously on his logistics. So actually, working with somebody like Games Quest or whoever, um, it doesn't have to be us, but working with somebody who knows logistics and pre-planning your campaign, and actually, now you look, we work with some of the big guys in the industry, uh, Modifius, for example, we do all of their, their, their Kickstarter for us. We don't actually need to do those, we learn from them, because these guys know what they're doing. You look at their Kickstarter, and they, too, they took the view of the world, they take a view of the world that the bigger, the best shipping rates that they can possibly negotiate up front and get it right, the more backers they're going to get. And, and, and for you guys here in the UK, your, the three biggest markets that we see are Germany, UK, and the US. Okay, but I shadow doubt those are your three big markets that you will get you will get shipping from. Now imagine yourself as a punter. Imagine yourself as a Kickstarter backer, and we hear this quite a lot, you know. And we hear quite a lot of people that love love the look of a game from the American, and the Americans go, "Yeah, it's thirty dollars to ship your game." I know, you're not going to back it. 
And that's the typical example of what would happen with venomous salt, just on the back end. Well, actually, if they ship it into a European fulfillment center and let that local company do that for them, it's going to be half that shipping. Guess how many more backers they're going to get? They're going to get a shed on more backers. Okay. So, actually, before you even launch your, and I, and I advise this so, so strongly, and not just with logistics, but with other things in terms of launching your Kickstarter, do your homework. Because whether it's logistics or YouTube video or planning or do your homework and, and the better you guys have got in terms of a Kickstarter, and not just with the but everything else, the more likely you will succeed. But believe me, and I tell you this hand on heart guys, I all want you to succeed. You know, for us, for us in the industry, for us as a company, we make our money from repeat business. We make our money. The more successful you are, the more successful we become. That's really what our philosophy is. So the more successful you are, the better it will be, the more you will get. And you will be amazed, you will be amazed at how many more backers you will get internationally. I promise you. So if there's one major message you take away from here is plan your logistics better. Talk to people who know what they're doing and what like what we do. We know what we're doing. Okay? So there we go. So sorry for delaying, but I think it, it, for one message you kind of need to do that. So in terms of your pre-planning in question, in terms of modules, then I, I, I've talked to people and work with people, and, and, and they can be at the end of the day. If you don't have a reputation in the marketplace, if you don't actually, you know, nobody knows who you are, nobody's experienced any of your gaming, etc., etc. Don't overcomplicate your Kickstarter for first. Do not overcomplicate it. Okay, you know, and particularly if you're a first time, first time publisher, keep it as simple and as good as possible. Once you have a reputation, okay, once you've built on that reputation, then you can start adding on all your other really good things that, that you can possibly do. So, certainly do that. So, in terms of manufacturing, you go to China all day long. Okay, unless you're going to have it locally in terms of your backers, go to China. Everybody, there's a reason why people use people like Wingo and Panda and people like that. Okay, they know what they're doing, they're very cost effective and, they, and they, they're good shipping. Okay, I think there's a few others in Europe, Luda Pack that some people use, but most people will go to China. Okay, so you get it on the boat in terms of China. Okay, and again, you know, working with us and our contacts and stuff, we, we can help you logistically get your stuff away. I, and and we, we're very much sort of another thing where we spoke to him on Skype. And he said, Nigel, Nigel, he said, Nigel, I, said, I just have a whole heap of pain. A whole heap of pain. I said, don't worry about it, Jeff. I said, I'm going to take your pain away. Okay? And we're going to take that away because that's what we do. So we can help you manage everything in terms of logistics or even a really good fulfillment company will be able to do that. Not just before it arrives at the warehouse, but everything when it sails from China, you know, through, uh, um, through to whatever fulfillment centers you want. You have a choice at that stage. You have a choice in terms of where you will ship that game to based on the backer information that you have. Okay? And you go and you get your quotes, etc., etc. So yeah, you can ship from China um, let's we say to China for the sake of argument, and you can ship to a European fulfillment centre. It will be us. Uh, I hope. Um, or you can ship to multiple fulfillment centres worldwide. But that has to come down to you working out your pricing in terms of how you're going to do it and working out logistically how you're going to do it. Um, and it all revolves around the weight of your game, not your size of your game but the weight of your game, okay? And, and the critical factor here, and you've got to add on, a lot of people forget to do this, whoever you're using for fulfillment, you've got to add on what packaging they're going to use. So typically for us, it's going to range between two and 300 grams, okay, for the box. Once you go over two kilos with that packaging, you've got problems, okay? You have problems. Because um, logistically, to ship something worldwide over two kilos, is a pain in the backside and becomes quite expensive. We can do it, okay, it, it, it's possible to do that. Shipping to Europe isn't a problem for that over that, but shipping from the UK to the US over two kilos, it becomes a problem. So, you then go away out. Nice, okay, how much to ship my parcel from the UK to America? Uh, it depends on the size, let's say 20 pounds, for example. 
Okay, so so when it gets to Europe, then you decide in terms of where that will go. So um, Europe, it's got the EU, rest of the world, and US is pretty much how we kind of break it down. So that is your problem, okay, that's, that's your problem, depending on the size of your game, let's imagine it's over two kilos, just for the sake of argument, and that's your problem, and a lot of games are over two kilos. So then it becomes, how do you get your games over then to, to the US, okay? So you can either then also ship to China, to a fulfillment center in the UK, uh, in the US, and they can do your local fulfillment, and generally, typically, you know, some of the big Kickstarters, they have fulfillment centers in the UK or Europe. They have it in Australia, Canada, and, and the US, predominantly where they, where they kind of go. And then they use something like us for the, for the rest of the world, depending on our rates. You've got to work out, okay, the price of import in here, okay, the price of import and the VAT, okay, and then the cost to ship out from the UK to the, to, to the US. Or alternatively, what the freight is, um, to the US, import duties and tax, and uh, Andy over there did a quote the other day, originally we thought it was going to be around a quid, and the time they paid for this, 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 it doubled to import something into the US. So you've got to get a proper quote for that freight into the US. And then obviously what the difference is in cost for the local, for local fulfillment, okay? And then subtract one or the other. That's your choice, pretty much. That is your choice in terms of whatever. And, and as I said about pre-planning, if you get it wrong and you don't put enough on your shipping, you're going to lose money. But equally, there's an opportunity to make money from shipping. Okay? You don't have, you know, you've got to be up the balance with DFI, so I use them as a really good example. They go all out to get the best shipping deal pre hand because they know they will get 20% more backers. Simple as that, really. So, so it's arrived, okay, you've got it in your fulfillment centres, and then it's kind of going to go out to your customers. Let's deal with the, the big elephant in the room. Tax. Tax. Does anybody have a clue? Does anybody have an idea? Okay, let me rephrase this. If you buy something from the US right now, and you pay $50 for that, for that game in the US, and it arrives on your doorstep, typically will happen, Royal Mail, you owe me some customer duty, fella, yeah? And you've got to pay 20% of those $50, so you owe the tax man, and they collect that through Mr. Postman, so they're going to collect $50, 20% of that, what, it's like 10 pounds, yeah? You're going to get 10 pounds there and then at the door to collect your, your, your tax, okay? So typically, if you are, Anywhere in the world, and each country is different here, and each one, like America for example, is fantastic, they just raise that up. It was it, was it two thousand, two and a half thousand? Eight hundred dollars. So you can so you can ship into the to the US for eight hundred dollars and the end user does not have to pay custom duty. Anybody idea what is it? Canada. Canada's the worst. Any ideas? Negative thousand. Ten Canadian dollars. <laughs> 10 Canadian dollars before, and if it's more than 10 Canadian dollars, the end user has to pay the tax. So, do I have a hard and fast answer for you in terms of your Kickstarter stuff? And if anybody quotes me on this, I'll deny I've said it, so we're not really filming. Okay. So, um, when you sell on Kickstarter, it's a pledge. Okay? Is it a sale? There is a massive grey area in EU law right now in terms of what constitutes a pledge. Is it a gift? Is it, it's so grey, there is no hard and fast rules in terms of what you're doing. So in theory, if you were to sell, and if you are selling, which technically you are, then when, and let's say your game is £30, when you import that into the UK, in theory, you should be paying 20% VAT on that full amount of £30. If you were bringing this so let's say it again, if you bring that game in to sell at £30 RRP, you should be liable for 20% at £30. I do not know of any Kickstarter publisher or manufacturer that is doing that. Right. Surely you pay 20% on the value of the shipment, which is the when you pay the manufacturer. I'm talking hypothetically, yes. That's what's currently happening. Yeah. 
that's what you got currently doing, and that's what everybody is currently doing, because it's such a grey area, it's such a grey area, that currently you are paying 20% on the manufacturing cost. Okay? So that's what everybody's doing. In the next two years, I guarantee that will change. I guarantee that the EU, the amount of money that's being generated on Kickstarter right now, which is more than video gaming, and the board gaming sector, and they're, and they're all looking at this, there's an article in the appendix last year about them trying to close the loophole on Kickstarter pledges. So just be warned, right now you're fine. Nobody, there is so grey that everybody's playing 20% on the manufacturing and the shipping cost when they're for duty. And each one will be different. The US is slightly less and more, but pretty much you will pay 20% on the manufacturing cost at the time of entry into the UK, plus the, um, plus the shipping, or 20% of the full amount. Okay. I'm just saying this, I'm pre-warning you that my gut says that in the next two years, there will be a law from the EU that will, that will nail that down, because nobody is really identifying what actually, is a pledge of sale, or is it a gift because you help them raise that point, and there's such a grey area right now, but it is coming. So in answer to your question, yes, you will pay import, de import duty on that as well. Now, we can pay that on your behalf and just contra-charge that back to you. So we can help you in terms of making sure we, we pay those charges and get them into the country for you, etc. Or any of them come from that perspective. Is that, the same, um, is that the same in the US? If we were to ship a pallet yes. from China to the US, it's the same. It's the you will pay import duty on the cost value of it. Because you don't have a commercial invoice. You don't, you're, not, you're, not, you're not shipping the product into the UK in order to sell it. You've already done that. Now, I, I was talking to Ninja Division the other day because they're looking to sell out in the UK. And, like, and, and each country is different because then if you're going to sell that product, so in answer to your question in terms of other, other leftover stock, if you're, going to, if you're going to sell that product, then you should, in theory, be paying 20% not on the cost price, but on the RRP price. Okay, so I admit it. Nobody's really tracking that, or they're not really clamping down on it. But I think the bigger it grows, potentially the more it becomes. So you've got your game in, and then we will, as a as a company, ship that out to um, again, and we can talk to you if you want in terms of shipping EU, rest of the world, UK, and the size. And it's bizarre, okay, in terms of the way shipping works. Up to 750 grams, I can ship cheaper to the US than I can my own country. Okay. Yeah. And the reason for that is, again, the size of a box in the UK has a minimum charge. It doesn't fit through a letter box, so there's a minimum charge. You, for example, pay like nearly three quid to ship that um, in the UK. Whereas when I ship to the US, it's purely by, by actual weight, no matter how big the product is. So it's just bizarre. But anyway, so you kind of get that over, and then, um, you know, I won't go into details about all the wonderful services we can do, but your customers will get emails, and, and we look after you, we'll package from start to finish, we'll do customer services for you. As I say, we'll take your pain away in terms of logistics, and we'll, we'll kind of do all of that as well. So in terms of um, your leftover stock, in terms of what you've got left in the warehouse, absolutely. And what's your go-to-market? I've sat with a guy um, who's using this... Um, um, dead cert, it's a uh, company one, and he had this conversation, uh, because we are um, one of Estevium's biggest online customers, so we, we spend quite a bit of money with Estevium. Who hasn't heard of Estevium? Has everybody heard of Estevium? Okay, so, um, Estevium are the biggest distributor in the UK for board games, um, and one of the biggest in Europe. They're owned by Asmodee, who are basically buying the world over. <laughs> Um, and, and they kind of have it. So basically, um, we are one of the biggest customers and we are five miles down the road from them and we are their fulfillment partner of choice. Broadly, what does that mean to you? Well, we have an inside, um, I play board games, for example, with the senior purchaser at, uh, at Estevium, who is a hobbyist. What you've got to remember about it, when you look at Estevium, do not look at them as a corporate company. Yes, they are. But they've built it on their reputation of being hobbyists. Fundamentally, these guys are making money, but they are hobbyists, okay? Pure and simple. They love board gaming. They have a passion for it, okay? And, and they were hopefully to be up here today, um, but John, um, who's the, the senior purchaser, he basically a football match with his kid. So he rang me just before he came up there. He is really happy, um, and um, hands up to another son who, through our contact at his Devium, have got a distribution deal. Hands up. Pete? Yeah? 
Greg Scott, where's Greg Scott? Dave? Okay. We try to look after the little guys. You guys have distribution deals with them. So they will actually try to look after the little guys, okay? And, and they are willing to talk to anybody and look at anybody, anybody's game out there in terms of whatever. And it might be a small initial order, but they will they will take um, a proportion of your games. But be prepared, guys. It comes with a cost, okay? It's not plain sailing, okay? I, I sat with a guy yesterday, and you've got to understand your go-to-market strategy here in terms of, yeah, it's really, really simple. And we can store your games, and we'll charge you for the storage, okay? That's not a problem. We'll help you take your game to market, okay? We, as a retailer, will work with you, and we'll take consignment stock up for you, and we'll list it on every click in Amazon site that we possibly can. Will that sell? We don't know. We're in the day, it's down to you to go there. But it's medium will get your, st your, your stock into the, into the, into the stores. Okay. But I sat with a guy the other day, and, and you've got to change your whole perception on pricing of your game here. Okay? So he sat there, and I said, what's your RRP, David? And he said, 29.99. I said, oh, brilliant. Okay. And you do realise, I said that, um, I'll introduce you to his DVD room, because the game looks quite good, that's not a problem. And I said, you do realise that they will take 60% of that. Oh, I said, now what's your RRP? And he went, 39.99. Okay. So your whole perception, and when you sell, whether you sell to the retail store, you're going to be looking at giving 40, 45% away if you sell direct. If you're going to go to distribution, you're going to be looking at 60%. So do not look at your cost of your game and go, I can make this amount of money. You've got to go, if I'm going to sell at this, I'm going to give away this percentage. This is how the industry works. Okay, you're going to give away this percentage, and then you are going to, you're going, that's what you're going to be left with. Okay, so you've got to look at where your game sits in the market in terms of doing that as well. So, yeah, so you can sell direct if you've got the time to shops, the stores, sell yourself, set up sell a central account on Amazon, sell directly if you want, sell to people like me, and you know we, we can try and sell your game for you. Or, Go to conventions, you're going to hear from the guy tonight, go into different conventions, etc. as well. But think about your go-to-market strategy and think about what you're going to do with that leftover stock because yeah, we can we can store it and we can do consignment stock for you, but you kind of got to think. So I've got to kind of wind things up a little bit, but just in terms of some of your questions. Um, insurance and shipping, that's a real tricky one. I don't really know. You're going to need to speak to your shipper about that, and you're going to need to you talk to your shipper. And but we we've got we deal with a lot of freight companies, so certainly we can ask that question for you in terms of doing that as well. Um, shipping X per day. So you've got a we we we've uh, I've appointed an operations uh, a manager to actually look at these sorts of projects and try and and try and be honest with you. And it all depends on your game, how many expansions, what you've got, how many SKUs have you got. Okay, it's a very simple game. We can easily do two, 200 a day. It's a complex day, game, it might be less. So it's all about you agreeing and pre-planning that. And we've learned, we, we really do try and pre-plan your project. Um, but yeah, it's really difficult to commit um, on things like that as well. Um, custom duties, I think we kind of got, got that and changing the postage cost, that vary from country to country. But pre-planning it, if you pre-plan it, you know where you stand. Leftover stock, go tonight, we covered that. Multiple um, drop ships, oh, we covered that, didn't we? How long after a Kickstarter did you have? Well, oh, guys, how long is a piece of string? You're not legally bound by any time. You, if you don't supply it, you're not legally bound to supply it. So if you do it three years later, then that's fine. There's no comeback. People know the risk and reward. We did tunnels and trolls for the guy uh, the other day, um, and, and that was two, year, two and a half years after he Kickstarted. So it's, uh, it's not that one. Extra copies we covered that, international duty we covered that. C mark, the C mark is a complete waste of time. All right, it's self-governed. The factory should be adhered to CE markings or whatever, but it's self-governed. Okay, C mark is a self-governed thing. You are saying, yeah, my pieces fit everything the CE says it does, and the manufacturer should be able to adhere to those qualities of the CE. But most people use the C mark because they know it gets into the country quicker and easier without questions being asked. But actually, it's self-governed, okay? Uh, and that's, I think, insurance we talked about. Uh, Pre-planning, um, in terms of the Kickstarter, we've kind of covered that out. And spares, yeah, you know, we, we always recommend 
uh, wherever you use to have a box of spares for your games. And certainly, you know, the amount of times that we people have come in and go, right, how many Kickstarters have you got? Yeah, 400. How many have you shifted? So, yeah, 400. Okay, what about damage? What about losses? What about stuff missing? Oh, I haven't think of that. I better send you another copy as well. Always over overestimate in terms of because it does Proportionally, happen. how much? Uh, we turn about 10%. We say, yeah. um, one good question in terms of whatever. If you're looking to uh, print more stock than you, your Kickstarter backers, we generally say times three. Okay, times two if it's a small print run, but look at your, your cutoffs in terms of price saving. So in other words, your price saving is, you know, you've got a thousand, your price saving is two thousand, stick to two thousand. So double, no more than triple, no more than triple. Okay, than that one, I think you'll burn your bridges on that one. But again, normally the smaller it is the triple, the larger it gets double um, in terms of you, because you, you'll spend a fortune on, uh, on, on storage fees. Not from us, of course, thank you very much. Uh, um, so, so, again, it's on the boat, remember it, because you've done all the hard work, hopefully. The ship says on the Ali Alio, you've made it, it's coming, we're going to ship it out for you. Yeah? Thank you very much.